Um, the rant series was created for YouTube so that we would stop derailing our more educational series. Structured educational series. Yes, yeah, structural educational series with our rants because that was an issue. Yeah, just I'm gonna go on this tangent and this tangent and this tangent and this tangent and what we're, what we're talking about again. Yeah, so we started the rant series so that we would do that less often. This rant, um, I would I'm like, like to... Sure. What? Someone like to share. Sure. Oh, that's because it's fabulous. I'd like to remind all of you that we welcome all who welcome all. We are intolerant of intolerance, and we will respect your presence at any class, event, or rant, so long as you respect the existence of everyone else. Please remember to stick with I statements. I think, I feel, I believe, rather than you statements. You should think, you should feel, you should believe, and we should all get along just fine. We do not treat your subjective opinion as equal to objective fact. Please don't expect us to. Uh, therefore, today, you can say, well, I think that this medication that does not work for COVID-19 does. And we'll think, say, okay, well, that's your subjective opinion that is not equal to verifiable scientific fact. Just so that we're real clear. And today's rant is a little tricky because we are talking about the deeply held personal beliefs of a person and we are dissecting them and saying why they are dangerous to disseminate to the United States population and to the world. However, it may not be as tricky as you think because it goes into the re-respect your beliefs so long as you respect the existence of other people because it definitely goes into not, res not respecting the existence of others. We are going to be discussing um, some really virulently anti-Semitic ideology uh, that is espoused by Nazis and neo-Nazis. It will likely touch on genocide and on eugenics and um, class warfare and uh, the cost of misinformation in human lives. We will be talking about modern day witch hunts in sub-Saharan Africa and the fact is that those modern day witch hunts have led to genital mutilation and uh, child death and extermination camps and the um, and gender-based violence and just a lot of really horrific atrocities. Yes. So additionally, we will be talking about the cost of medical misinformation. And right now with the pandemic, uh, that is a very triggering con content for a lot of people. This is a scary time and I'm seeing an uptick in PTSD, CPTSD, anxiety, and depressive related like we provide Basically, religious like. counseling. We provide pastoral counseling. There's been an uptick. Obviously can't share any of the details, but um, fear is abundant right now. And so if this is going to be a triggering class for you, you know, no worries. Uh, you can check out now. You can check out at any time. We are not the Hotel California. Yeah. And uh, last warning, one of the reasons why Tina is helping me today, um, even though I'm dominating the conversation because I was the one who got all the information ready and was like, I'm going to do a rant on this, because I am punchy as fuck. I am loopy and really out of it, so I'm going to do my best to stay on topic, but Tina is here. I have herded goats, I can herd you. Thank you, well, I appreciate it. I don't have my cane though. So, now I that I sorry. have really belabored the point there, I'm going to go ahead and get into today's actual rant. Starting with, uh, let's just talk about what happened and why we're ranting about this. So the Tea Party Patriots got together a group of, I will be generous and call them Medical positions. adjacent individuals. Medical adjacent <laughs> individuals, thank you. That's a good one, that's a good one Ian. And they had a Trump supported 
press conference. They called it, what do they call it? A seminar, um, press conference, wherein they shared what they claimed were their scientifically grounded theories as to how to address COVID-19, which involved not wearing masks, reopening the states, putting kids back in schools, and anti-malarials. Um, and anti-malarial drugs. And I'm gonna get into all of that and in a minute, uh, but I just want to say, just for the record, kids will literally eat each other's boogers, okay? And this is a whole separate rant that I'm not gonna get into right now, but um, as a reminder, a lot of the politicians in this country are very, very old yeah. and wealthy. And um, it's entirely possible that when they did have young children, they didn't actually do any of the raising themselves. Yes. Yeah. Um, and that is really evidenced by the fact that they seem to think that kids won't just like switch masks because they're like, hey, your mask is cool on a trade. Um, so that's a whole other rant that I'm not going to do right now. And um, we're gonna focus on that one doctor series that basically people were like, hey, y'all, this person that was standing on those steps talking, Dr. Stella Emanuel, she believes in some really interesting things. And then this proceeded to turn into sort of a social media war between people who were like, I believe Dr. Stella Emanuel, um, and people who were like, this person is not someone whose ideas you should espouse because she may have um, some really strange ones. I'm trying to stay away from ableist language. There's a lot of ableist language in the post calling her out. Yes. Um, a lot of language. She has some very problematic ideas. Yeah, a lot of language that targets people who are mentally neurodivergent yeah. or who have certain conditions. Uh, and it's it's not good language, so we're gonna try and avoid that. But let's just talk about some of her ideas. Yep. Starting with, um, she believes that gynecological problems are caused by people having sex in their dreams with demons and witches. If you saw a post on whatever social media saying I have, like I have checked in safe from demons, that's what that involves. Mm -hmm. Probably. Most given, likely. Given that you're watching our channel, there's at least a chance that. Anyway. Yeah, so and so has been marked safe from demons. If that is something, that is something that actually started popping up. I think today. Yes, I saw that one. Um, um, with yeah. the demon walking, there's also the one where the demons walking away from someone's bed, like the incubus drawing from like middle age art, yes. and yeah. So also believes that alien DNA is currently being used in medical treatments. Isn't that more of a Scientologist one? She has a whole grab bag of okay. all kinds of conspiracies. Okay, cool. cool. Um, Scientists have plans to install microchips in people and are developing a vaccine to prevent people from being religious. So just touching on the microchip thing, y'all are carrying one in your pocket everywhere you go. They do not need to put one inside your body. You carry it everywhere. And if you have TikTok and Facebook, believe me, they know basically absolutely everything they want to know about you. And a lot of things that they and don't. And a lot of things they probably don't. <laughs> um, uh, right. Government is run in part by reptilians and other aliens. We are going to be spending a lot of time with this one. The magic eight ball toy is psychic and part of a scheme to get children used to witchcraft. Hydroxychloroquine cures COVID-19 and protective face masks are not necessary. Going to come back to that one as well. The Illuminati has a plan hatched by a witch in order to destroy the world using abortion, gay marriage, and children's toys. We're going to come back to that one. Uh, Harry Potter and Wizards of Waverly Place and various other medias that are rooted in um, witchcraft themes like Sabrina the Teenage Witch are part of a scheme to introduce children to spirits and witches. Schools teach children to meditate so they can meet with demons. Gay marriage will lead adults 
to adults marrying children, and gay Americans are practicing homosexual terrorism. Wow. Children need to be whipped. Jesus Christ will destroy Facebook servers if her videos are not restored to the platform. For some reason, I have a feeling that Jesus doesn't actually care if her videos are taken down. I also just like, I, I seriously, I do not understand where fan in Jesus even comes from, especially modern fan in Jesus. Y'all, the words are in red. They're in red in almost every modern edition of the Bible. You can walk in and just read the red words. Or if you get a really old one, they'll be in gold. Right, really old ones are in gold. gold. Um, My for the record, growing up. homosexuality was well known in Jesus' time, and he never said a word about it. Also and, not about Facebook. Yeah. Anyway, moving right along. No, there is no evidence, no evidence whatsoever, um, that any of the physicians who were claiming that they were on the front lines saving lives from the pandemic are anywhere near the front lines of the pandemic. So let's talk about um, these white-coated frontline doctors, right? So they're calling themselves America's Frontline Doctors. That is their name. And they are funded that sounds like um, in part by a group called the Tea Party Patriots. This may sound familiar. This may sound familiar. Right, anyway, uh, none of them, not a single doctor on those steps is actually anywhere near the front lines of the pandemic. Um, they are not working in the wards where people are being treated with ventilators. They are not doing that. It is a bald-faced lie. Um, and in fact, some of them do not currently practice medicine. They don't have active licenses. So two of them are ophthalmologists. One of them is no longer licensed. Uh, sorry, so it was one, my bad. Um, and uh, yeah, but an ophthalmologist does that's, not that's have, eyeballs, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Let's see. Let's run down their profile, shall we? Simone Gold, MD, JD, um, talks about herself as a doctor, lawyer, writer, and mom. She earned a medical degree in 1989 from what is now Rosalind Franklin University of Medicine and Science in Chicago. She is identified as a board certified emergency physician in Los Angeles. Her California medical license includes her unverified claim that she is involved in patient care 30 to 39 hours per week and indicates that she has a practice location in Hesperia, a bedroom community of about 100,000 on the edge of the Mojave Desert. Um, I could just also say Mojave because that's like saying chai tea. Or Sahara. Or Sahara Desert, yeah. Sahara. That yeah. desert fucking earned it. It's the yes. desert. desert. <laughs> <laughs> right. Stella Emanuel, we've already shared some of her beliefs. She's a pediatrician um, and minister in Houston with a clinic in a strip mall. She claims that she has treated various COVID-19 patients and that none of them have died. That's a great way to espouse your treatment. It hasn't killed anybody. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> killed anyone. That would be a good, like, if we were in the 1800s, that would be a gold star. My treatment has not killed anyone yet. Yeah, it's it's like, you know, you can start selling something and be like, this contains no death particles and death particles don't even need to exist. Nope. And then all the other companies have to be like, well, ours doesn't contain any death particles either. <laughs> so particles aren't real. Anyway, you could say, I was the first to develop this treatment with no death particles. Any particle can be a death particle if you get enough of them moving fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, James Todaro, MD, <laughs> is an ophthalmologist based in Michigan who is no longer practicing. Um, his medical license, which is classified as limited to education only, 
in Michigan expired in 2019. Bob Hamilton, MD, is a pediatrician and school's liaison with American's Frontline Doctors, practices in Santa Monica, California, where he has his private practice, Pacific Ocean Pediatrics, for more than 30 years. Um, he does have hospital privileges at uh, Providence St. John's Health Center in UCLA Santa Monica Medical Center. He organizes faith-based medical service trips in developing countries. That's terrifying. The pediatrician became an internet sensation when he created the Hamilton Hold, a four-step technique used to quiet babies instantly. That sounds terrifying. That sounds Why like it's me. Probably not. Are, are you choking on the babies? I don't I'm know. Really hoping. I, I haven't seen this. I don't know what he's teaching, but one of my big problems with the whole, like, don't let kids cry. Side rant in the rant. It's really fascinating from an evolutionary standpoint that our babies make so much noise. It's really fascinating because other babies do not cry the way ours do. Ours will wail and express themselves because our evolutionary advantage as a species is that we're social. Yeah. It's that we take care of each other. It's that we look out for one another um, and we love one another. That is our evolutionary advantage that we will communicate our needs to one another and those needs will be answered. And then there's this whole damn movement designed to teach children not to cry. That's except... the only way they have to communicate at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, sure, it's you're a pain in the ass and it's why I don't want to be a parent. <laughs> just that reason? <laughs> just, um, one of the many. Being, you know, one of my ex-girlfriends was there when, like, my kid threw up in my bed at 3 o'clock in the morning, and that, that was her reason. She was like, I do not want to be a mom, ever, because if that happened, I would be mad. <laughs> exactly. That is how a child can do it has not yet developed other methods of communication. That is how they communicate when they need something, because, like you said, with that is how we evolve. We've evolved through communication. And one of the things that you see in children who are not being, you know, taken care of when they express their needs is something called reactive attachment disorder. And it's really, really, really damaging. Um, moving right along. Let your kids cry. Like, um, he is a huge advocate for sending children back to schools and says we need to act not out, not act out of fear, but act out of science. Agreed. That's bad science. <laughs> right. Uh, Dan Erickson, D.O., is the co-owner of Accelerated Urgent Care in Bakersfield, California. He is a former emergency physician who was featured on national television in late April after he claimed data from his center um, showed that COVID was more widespread and less harmful than reported in medical journals. The American College of Emergency Physicians and American Academy of Emergency Medicine issued a joint statement condemning Erickson's claims, calling them reckless and untested musings that are inconsistent with current science and epidemiology regarding COVID-19. Richard Urso, MD, is an ophthalmologist at Houston Eye Associates in Bel Air, Texas, who has been talking about the anti-malarial drug as a treatment for COVID-19. Oh, he's been on Fox News with yeah, Laura Ingram. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. So uh, moving right along. Wait, what? Why has he been, what? He says that it's safer than Tylenol, Aspirin, and Motrin. It's not. It's not. It's so not. It, if you are prone to heart difficulties, not a safe drug. Okay, um, and in fact, there have already been deaths. Okay, but why has he been work? Okay, so it says in this article that he has been working with HCQ for 30 years. Why? He's an ophthalmologist. Why? Yeah. Um, for those of you who want to look at this article, 
This is medpagetoday.com, infectious disease, COVID-19, um, talking about the title of the article is no evidence that doctor group and viral video got near COVID front lines. So yeah. that's where I'm getting my sources. All right. Yeah, from that, what I'm mostly getting is you can, in fact, have a medical degree and have a lot of schooling and still have very harmful ideology and ignore science. Yes. Like you can go through all that school, spend all of that money and still go places and still ignore science. And you know, I could go on another rant here about how people are buying their way into certain fields rather oh, yeah. than actually yeah. learning their way into certain fields and that there are far more qualified people who will never be doctors despite a calling to the physician or to the Feeling the calling to do the profession. Work. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, to the profession and uh, the skills to actually do it. But instead, we get lots and lots of wealthy people going into the profession so that they continue to be wealthy who won't listen to their patients because they are the kind of people who were never taught to listen to other people. Nope. All right. Anyway, but that's a whole nother rant. Not for today. Anyway, nope. um, hydroxychloroquine um, doesn't work against COVID-19. And it's not because, and I'm aware of everyone going, but in vitro, in vitro, in vitro. In vitro and in the body are two completely different environments. Like, they cannot get it in adequate concentrations in a person's lungs to actually address the virus. Without also killing the without person. Without also killing the person. Like... In vitro trials are amazing and can put you on the right path to studying something, but something working in vitro does not mean it'll work in the human body. I bet bleach in vitro would work. Well, that's the whole thing. They're yeah. like, that. I mean, our president told people to drink bleach because in a lab study, bleach kills it. Yeah, you're right. But you can't put bleach in a body and have it do the same thing without killing the person. Exactly. Also, I should... I should have clarified this at the beginning of the video and I did not. Neither Tina nor myself are medical professionals. Nope. Um, we cannot diagnose or cure or treat any medical ailment or condition or disease. And this rant is not intended to do so. It is to rant about how much of this information is easily accessible to the public. It is possible to educate yourself without having a med medical degree. like. You don't have to have a medical degree to call people out on their bullshit. So, um, the first thing that I want to talk about with the death toll attached to misinformation um, is the actual COVID-19 death toll right now. Yeah. So, I keep seeing a number uh, bandied around on social media that is just wrong. And I'm not sure where they got it because I went digging today to try and find out where this number came from. And I don't know if it came from Fox News Entertainment or where, but I couldn't find it. Um, I keep seeing that COVID-19 kills 1%. It kills 1%. That's not true. Even if it was, that's a lot of people. Yeah, that's 1 a lot of people. Of how many hundreds of thousands? How many millions? We're still the hundreds of thousands. We're not to the millions yet, right? We are, and for we are above the millions oh, okay. in in people who are infected in the United States. Yes. 1% yeah. of 1 million is still a massive amount of people. Right now in the United States, we're a little under 4.5 million, mm -hmm. just a hair under 4.5 million confirmed cases. Um, and we are at around 150,000 deaths. Now I did the exact numbers at somewhere around 10 o'clock this morning. And we are at a 3.38% death toll for the nation. 3.38%. And that's from so, confirmed cases. For clarification, 3.38% 3.3% death rate, as in people who died out of confirmed cases, yes. not out of total people in the population. Yes, correct. Um, of those infected in the United States. That are reported. That are reported. 3.38% died. That are reported. That are reported. The fact that At the same a lot time, of reported illnesses the a CDC lot of has noted <laughs> on their own website that um, there have been spikes in death tolls in concentrated population areas 
related to respiratory distress and pneumonia and that those numbers are much higher than we normally see for dying of respiratory distress and pneumonia and that those are likely COVID-19 deaths that are not being counted because there was no test performed upon the person to confirm that they had COVID-19. Yeah. So the death rate is probably higher than it seems, not lower, and it is certainly higher than 1%. 1% would still be bad and unacceptable. As the virus spreads, it will mutate. Um, yeah. They are already seeing mutations that are making it more effective at killing people because that's what viruses like to do. They like to mutate and become more efficacious at infecting and harming the host, uh, yeah. taking over the host cells. We're already seeing um, young, generally healthy people dying more than, than they, they have were. in the previous months. Like The more it spreads, the better it will get at infecting us and taking over our cells and the more it will mutate and the harder it will be to address it. Yeah. Um, so one percent would be a huge number very very quickly. A ridiculously huge number. We already had 150,000 deaths in the United States. That's a huge number. That is an appalling number. There's more people dying per day right now in the United States than during World War II. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, not okay. This misinformation already has a massive death toll. Telling people they don't need to wear masks, telling people it's okay to not practice social distancing, telling people that it's okay to take a drug that doesn't work, there's a huge death toll attached to that. Yeah. But additionally, those theories that people are sort of making fun of Dr. Emanuel for having, they have their own death toll. They have their own death toll. So let's talk about those theories. So the theory here, right, is that some secret group of people controls the banks. Now we're specifically talking about the lizard people one that, that was mentioned previously. Lizard people, Illuminati, um, secret aliens. You yeah. know, we're, we're actually going to sum it all up now. It's often Illuminati reptiles. Like, not okay. just reptiles, but Illuminati reptiles. But we're... Um, we are specifically starting off very generally here. Okay. So a secret group of people controls the banks, the media, the economy. Um, all the information that you're receiving is actually filtered according to this group's demands. Um, they manipulate politicians. They manipulate the educational system all to their benefit. Now, so we're talking it, about oligarchs, right? Right, right, exactly. So if, if we were sitting having this conversation as a family, um, we would say, yeah, it's the 1%. It's the oligarchs. It is the uber wealthy who can buy and sell politicians, it's who can control who publishes whoever owns the Fox, books. Whoever owns the media company that owns Fox News and probably two Fox other media. What? Um, not the random <laughs> today. <laughs> <laughs> Still that's, not the point. Yeah, that's what I just said. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so there is absolutely a group that controls all of this. Um, you know, you could look at Je Jeff Bezos. Look at the people who are getting wealthier, who are getting something out of what's happening in the country right now. The people who own the military contracts, the people who own the companies that are shipping things to everyone, who, you know, there are people who benefit from this kind of chaos and yeah. it's not illuminati reptiles but okay so we talk about these conspiracy theories they're the illuminati they're the freemasons they're blood drinking lizard people from the alpha draconis star system um they control the world right that's the theory they subvert democracies and representative republics because we're not a democracy um we're not even a representative republic anymore. We're a Kakistan receiving kleptocracy, but that's really not, not today's rant. Um, thank you guys. We have a lot um, of rants. They really want to turn everybody gay. Uh, they want everybody to be witches. They want everybody having sex with demons, and they're putting chemicals in the water and injecting microchips with vaccines. Right? That's that's sort of the the grab bag 
here, but that's the idea. Um, I probably don't have to tell you that this is horseshit, that this is complete bullshit, that this isn't real. Um, in case I have to, it's not real. That's not real. No. Um, right. These kind of conspiracy theories are really appealing uh, to people who feel disadvantaged, marginalized, oppressed, um, or who feel alienated from those around them. Um, and the groups that spread them are very good at using the fact that someone feels very other and alienated um, to make this comfort space where they come and become indoctrinated and become um, radicalized. They're also very popular with people who feel like someone's keeping them down. Right. They were told they were owed something. They were owed a beautiful woman. They were owed a good job. They were owed, you know, this billion that was supposed to be coming their way because they are a temporarily disadvantaged billionaire, not the working poor. Um, and they didn't get it, so there must be a reason, right? And it's reptiles. Yep, that is exactly where we're going, Mary. Yeah, not we our, are. Um, a couple there. other people have mentioned it as well, but we are on our way. It will yeah, be covered. The, the whole point. This is, this is where we're going. <laughs> a large preface to, uh, to addressing that. A lot of these people have no idea that what they are espousing is um, an anti-Semitic dog whistle that was created by Nazis. I had um, a game I played a little while ago on one of my farms. One of my coworkers was a really cool dude. He found conspiracy theories absolutely hilarious. So he would go and look them up and like watch the videos and read about them and laugh. And then every time he mentioned them, I would go into detail and explain exactly why that specific conspiracy theory was racist. And I proceeded to destroy everything he loved and it was really fun. I'm uh, so proud of you. I didn't even know you at the time, I don't think. No, it's, 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 oh yeah, it was, um, it was last year. Oh, I didn't I know was you at the in, time. Yeah, I was in California. I took great pleasure in being known as a person who ruined everyone else's fun because I would tell them why their interests were problematic. <laughs> I'm not welcome at parties. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, I was kind of a downer there. I took pride in it. These conspiracy theories are created by Nazis. And we're going to get into the history in just a second. I want to be very clear that I'm not accusing Dr. Emanuel of being a Nazi. Um, and uh, I am not saying that everyone who espouses or believes in these conspiracy theories is a Nazi. I'm saying they're being used by yeah. Nazis. And they are you, being radicalized by Nazis. And if you already believe this conspiracy theory, you, if, when a Nazi eventually approaches you and starts putting together the dog whistles, you're going to be more likely to believe it because you already, you're already believed. Primed. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it's a way of priming people for Nazi radicalization. Exactly, and then you wind up with Pizzagate and the George Soros thing, which we already ranted on in a different video about how the whole blaming everything on George Soros is part of an anti-Semitic, Nazi-driven propaganda machine. Um, so I'm just going to say that that is attached to this. They yeah. are part of the same conspiracy theory. So. Um, basically, uh, this all can be tracked back, um, to the information that the Nazis disseminated to their followers, where they said, um, the reason why we are targeting this ethnic minority, um, for extermination is because they are simultaneously these um, leeches upon society and also these secret world puppeteering ultra powerful cabal of um, sorcerer bankers right and they and this is this is one of the things I just want to point out about double think so I'm using a phrase from 1984 but you can watch double think in action in the media right now where simultaneously immigrants are coming to steal all your jobs and be lazy and exist off state welfare. Yes. Um, where simultaneously uh, 
women are too smart and too dumb, right? Um, there is so much double think and people will espouse, like it's the same people who were like, well, I have the right to march with my gun so that I can have a haircut. We'll be like, but those people marching so that you will stop killing them in the streets. No, no, they're just rabbit browsers. They are violent extremists and should be put down by the federal government in unmarked vans. Different rant, different day. Um, this is double thing. Right? Well, this conspiracy theory, the reptilians, the Illuminatis, the, the things that the Nazis said, it's all rooted in doublethink. They can both simultaneously say that Jewish people are these horrible, I said leeches upon society before, I'm not coming up with a better way right now that doesn't actually have slurs within it. Right. Um, and also that they have all of this secret power. and. It, Conveniently, it was a way of telling the poor who were angry because they were hungry right. and yeah, yeah, look people. at those people they are there. Right. It's not us, the wealthy elites who are, you know, secreting our money away in giant piles that we can swim in like Scrooge McDuck. No, 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 no. We don't control everything. It's not our fault your family doesn't have, what was it? Food? Right. No, no, no. It's, it's the reptile juice. This them. That's what that is. It is a way of shuffling the blame onto a minority. Um, and <laughs> you can get a stochastic terrorist standing behind a podium saying it with certain words, and conspiracy theorists saying it with other words, and they meet in the middle with public policy. Uh, so let's talk about the protocols of the elders of Zion because that's where it went after the Nazis so um, well no 1903 so before the Nazis but um, the most famous and influential case of such anti-semitic propaganda is a document called the protocols of the elders of Zion released in 1903 it is supposedly the recorded minutes of a secret society of elite Jews who gathered together to non-specifically discuss how they control the media the banks and the world um, it involves a lot of sinister laughing and, and, uh, really comedic, badly written dialogue. So um, Henry Ford printed at his own expense half a million copies and have been distributed in America. Yeah. Um, its goal was to turn the attention of the emerging revolutionary movement away from the actual Russian ruling class and towards the Jews. Um, despite it promptly being shown to be plagiarized from a satirical novel from 1864, the Nazis used it as a central piece of propaganda. Um, then the, uh, we get to uh, David Ick, which what a fantastic name for someone who is so icky. Like that is, that is nominative declaratism right there. Um, his name is Ick. <laughs> Everything he does is Ick. Ick. Um, right, so, sorry, uh, so David Ick is um, really responsible for the anti-Semitic reptilian theory being so popularized in the United States, along with Ford. Um, basically, he wrote the Robots Rebellion, The Truth Shall Set You Free, The Biggest Secret, Children of the Matrix, um, and basically developed a New Age anti-Semitic conspiracy theory um, that is really based in the Protocols of the Elders of Zion, um, which is where I got confused. The Protocols came first before the Nazis. The, yeah. It came later after the Nazis, but is really behind the resurgence of this conspiracy theory in modern America, um, on places like Reddit. Don't a lot of his books have like pyramids and too many camera flares? Yeah. Lens flare, that's the word. And like, um, he believes that there are interdimensional reptilian beings called the Archons. Um, they're also referred to as the Anunnaki, which is pulling upon the theories of 
white people who say that brown people don't understand how to stack blocks and therefore could not have ever constructed any of the historical monuments that they constructed. Obviously, um, the pyramids were aliens, not basic uh, geography. Yeah, no, and not geography, geology. So the big, geometry, geometry. the big debate between like David Ick and those people is whether or not the like aliens are good guys or bad guys. Yeah, um, because uh, the New Age people who were like aliens built the pyramids, even though we know how they were built because it's drawn on the walls. Um. They they say the aliens were good guys, right? Um, except some of them are like, nah, they came to enslave mankind. But then you get the people like David Ick who were like, oh yeah, they came and they made all the monuments because brown and black people don't understand the biggest force that binds together our universe, which is gravity. Um, uh, question. Yes. Um, someone asked if Helena Lutovsky had a hand in the construction of the anti-Semitic conspiracy in question. An influence on it? Absolutely. Yeah, an influence? Yes. Um, honestly, I could do a whole historical class on just this, but I'm trying to do a rant with history thrown in. <laughs> um, so, I'm really bad at this. I'm really bad at keeping the rants out of the history classes, and I'm really bad at keeping the history out of the rants. I'm, I'm yeah. trying, y'all. Uh, yeah. All of this stuff also puts a very interesting perspective on the Assassin Creed games. Yep, he believes that a genetically modified human archon hybrid race of shape shifting reptilians known as the Babylonian Brotherhood, the Illuminati, oh, or the Elite one. manipulate global events to help keep humans in constant fear because they feed off the negative energy that this creates. That's his theory. Um. It's a theory. It's, yep, and um, he is absolutely an anti-Semitic neo-Nazi. Yes. He is absolutely an anti-Semitic neo-Nazi. Uh, I am aware that some of the people who read his work don't realize it's anti-Semitic in the same yeah. way that someone can read J.K. Rowling and not know that she's being anti-Semitic because it is written in such a way that you can miss it. And yeah. that's not unintentional. It is yeah, that's written, the point. That's the point. The point is to write it in such a way that it provides these convenient, comforting explanations as to why you don't have a sexy wife and a billionaire job. Um, and uh, it's, it's very comforting to people who are like, well, why don't I have food? Yeah. So. At the same time, other people who are just full of hate, they know what you're talking about. And they're like, yes, I'm full of hate too. Let's be full of hate together. I like you because you also hate people who I hate. And they talk to each other um, yeah. in dog whistles. And they talk to each other in symbols. Um, there were certain tattoos that yes. tell them how to recognize each other. There are certain phrases that number up to a certain amount of words. Um, that tell each other, like, I'm a Nazi, I'm on your side, and that side is anti, you know, Jewish people, Romani people, um, differently people. abled people, queer people, black people, um, anybody but wealthy white people. Um, yeah. So one of the things I really want to be clear on is that there were people using these conspiracy theories who are absolutely Nazis that are using it to talk to each other. Yes. And there are people out there who are believing these conspiracy theories and have no idea it's related to Nazism, but they're also being emboldened to ignore fact, emboldened to ignore science, emboldened to ignore reality and move ever closer to the Nazis. It's not innocent, the fact that they believe these things, because it's a way of slowly moving them over. Yeah, the, the priming we talked about earlier. Yeah, it's priming. Um, it's, it's a kind of grooming. Yeah. Like, uh, so, additionally, I want to talk about a particular extremist Pentecostal movement. Yes. And the cost of the modern day witch hunts. So it's very funny, I guess, online, on social media, to make fun of the people who are like, 
the lightning bolt on Harry Potter's head is a satanic S. And reading Harry Potter is a way of converting children to witchcraft. Um, and it's very funny, I guess, to make fun of like, oh, well, people having sex with demons. We literally have a class every Saturday called Ask a Witch. Um, because there are witches in every... I'm okay, I'm not going to say every. Most organized and non-organized religions and faith-based movements and spiritual paths in the world. Yeah, throughout have, history. Most most of them will have something witch or witch adjacent. Witch or witch adjacent, right. Um, and we welcome okay. witches from all of those cultures, religions, spiritual paths, walks of life to come and talk about their faith-based or non-faith-based practice of witchcraft and answer questions about it. And we've had quite a few on the channel, although a lot of the time it's just me and Ian. Um, yeah. So we work with people who absolutely do have sex with incubi and succubi. Yeah. Who absolutely do worship Lucifer or who call themselves Satanists but do not worship Satan or Lucifer um, because that's not what no, that kind of Satanism is. Yeah. Church of um, Satan does not necessarily mean religious. It's, it's a, anyways. And I, like, I support the open practice of witchcraft. I am an openly practicing witch. So I don't want to talk about this conspiracy theory and the cost of this extremism in Sub-Saharan Africa and have anybody here that I'm saying there is no validity to the idea that witches exist. Because I'm seeing people on Facebook being like, ha ha ha, these people are scared of witches. There's no such thing as witches. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Right here. I'm, I'm, um, I'm a witch. Or like, ha ha ha, this person thinks that people have sex with, with uh, incubi and succubi. Nobody does that. Oh, we've taught a class on how. I mean, like, I know personally. I right. know people who have. Uh, I've had sex with other things, or at least tried, but that's not tonight's topic. No, I mean, all. we teach a class on sex magic. Yeah. You want to learn some of the methods of summoning them? Cool, we'll teach you. That's one issue I have with people, how people are making fun of her. One of the other ones was the ableism in their remarks. But additionally, like, yes, ha ha ha, so funny except that the extremists of this particular religious movement are having a lot of success in sub-Saharan Africa yeah. in convincing people that there are witches who are trying to turn everybody gay, who are trying to um, bring plagues and devastation and natural disasters I don't to know areas. You, I don't know if you haven't noticed, but those things were already happening. Right. But I mean, they'll literally blame climate change yeah. on witches. They will blame, um, yeah, did you know we curdle milk? Uh, and these claims that this very extremist Pentecostal movement are making are leading to some really horrible atrocities in sub-Saharan Africa. So uh, there are, in um, the actual country of South Africa, Tanzania, Kenya, Nigeria, Malawa, Malawi, Ghana, Gambia, Benin, Angola, um, Senegal, Namibia, Rwanda, modern day witch hunts. Um, and they are leading to, um, in some places, if a child is labeled as being a witch child, no one is allowed to feed or clothe or give water or comfort to that child until the child just dies. Um, there are extermination camps where people who are accused of witchcraft are being rounded up and being killed. Um, there are really horrific atrocities being performed, including genital mutilation, um, wherein basically the genitalia of someone who is born with a vagina um, is accused of being this center of these demonic witch powers and mutilated so that they can't use their demonic witch powers. Um, now I come from a culture, and I'm just going to touch on this very, very briefly, wherein it is believed that the vagina has magical powers and that you can curse someone by having your vagina 
come in contact in very particular ways with that person. Um, you can curse someone by lifting your skirts and flashing your vagina at them because you have this vagina power. Um, and I don't believe that and I don't, um, which has put me at odds with people. people. Um, and uh, I don't believe in genital mutilation. Um, I cannot countenance it at all. Uh, and um, that goes for, I mean, like, check out our YouTube video on um, sex education, comprehensive and inclusive sex education. We have a whole two classes on genital mutilation of people who are born with phalluses, born intersex, um, or born with vaginas, or any of the spectrum in between those. Um, and I'm not going to get into all of it right now because I could barely get through the class the last time. I think I actually started crying. If I didn't start crying on camera, I started crying off camera. Um, yeah, it was, I drank a lot of whiskey to get through that class. Um, right now I'm drinking alcoholic ginger beer and St. Germain, which is delightful, but not really strong enough for this topic. Sorry. It's very refreshing. Uh, so. There are actual modern day witch hunts going on right now, and it is rooted in the theories that Dr. Emmanuel espouses. Um, it yeah. is rooted in those ideologies. We laugh at them because we have Sabrina the Teenage Witch on TV, because we have the magicians, because Harry Potter's on the bookshelves at Barnes and Noble, and so we think we're safe. So it doesn't apply to us. And in a lot of cases, we have no idea that this is even happening. Yeah. Although um, I, I bet that there are some communities in the U.S. where it's happening too. Oh, yeah. It's just not going to be talked about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Just like uh, conversion therapy um, happens in communities here in the United States, anti-witchcraft harm against children and, and members of the community is absolutely happening in the United States. Yeah. Um, and if they had their way and they were making policy, and I would like to remind you that the president supports Dr. Emanuel, um, and that many of the far right who are in power right now are members of the extremist and of the Pentecostal faith. You know, uh, Pence thinks that gay people should be put to death. So we're laughing about this. But as we're moving in an increasingly fascist direction, as a like religious extremism takes over our government, this may not be something like, I don't think we should be laughing about it now because there's a death toll to this. Yeah. There's a human toll in suffering about this right now. Um, just because it's happening in another country doesn't mean it, it doesn't matter. Um, but this is the direction this goes in. And this is what many of the people who are espousing these beliefs want in the United States. If they're pushing forward in Africa and then they're coming back from their missionary trips and teaching in their churches behind podiums and helping get politicians elected who support their ideology, it's what they want here too. So we can say, ha ha, it's funny. But the very same people who will stand behind a podium and say, this is a witch hunt, you holding me accountable for sexual assault, you holding me accountable for supporting Nazis, you holding me accountable for, uh, you know, the looting of the American wealth and shoveling it into the pockets of the super wealthy. This is a witch hunt, not that actual witch hunt that I support. What's happening over there? Yeah, not, not that actual witch hunt, which I don't fund. Right, no, 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 no. You holding me accountable for being a racist, misogynist, uh, classist, ableist, rapist piece of shit, that's a witch hunt, not the actual witches in death camps. Yeah, yeah. So, we laugh, but it's not funny. Um, and while yes, we should be pointing out that this person has beliefs that are extreme and dangerous. We should not be treating it as a joke. Not when the president and the president's son-in-law are retweeting her 
okay? Yeah. Um, not when there's this death hole attached to her beliefs. All of her beliefs that we just spent this all this time hour. unpacking. So this was an hour long rant. But I think we managed to get through all of it. And I Stay think I made my topic. point. Only because of you. <laughs> you. You were very good at hurting me and keeping me on topic. Like I said, I can, uh, I've heard of goats before. Weirdly, I'm not offended at being compared by, to a goat because Don't I work. also feel like occasionally I'm quite clever and then other times I run into the only pole. <laughs> um, you are less distracted. You are significantly less distractible than, than a goat. goat. That's and it. you don't chew on my clothing. I leave behind the green slime? No, I don't. No. Okay. Nor do you poop in my milk. <laughs> it's good. It's good. I, <laughs> I do not recall ever having pooped in milk. So, on that note... <laughs> Please remember that you can send us topics to cover in our rants. Um, we're generally happy to do so. And that you can send us respectful questions. Uh, Neo-Nazi trolls will be deleted. Nazis will be deleted and blocked. Um, yeah. Yep. And uh, please be safe out there, everyone. If you Especially haven't, right now. if you haven't considered doing so already, please remember to like and subscribe to our channel. And if you like the work that we do, you can consider becoming a patron. Thank you very much for watching. I know tonight was super... Uh, <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this. Um, yeah. But I appreciate that you stuck with us. And I think that we are going to go ahead and um, go have something stronger to drink now. Yeah. Have a good night. You had to be in.